Um, and the reason why I wanted to show you guys the sections and talk about activities is to get you to think about, number one, why you choose the activities that you choose. I'm not trying to tell you what you should choose. I used to, when I was a counselor, students would always come up to me, should I do ASB? Should I do this sport? Should I do M U N? Would have, should have, could I can't tell you what you need to do. What I want you to do is think proactively as to why certain activities reflect the person who you are and ultimately want to demonstrate to the colleges and the universities. Having said that, it's very important that you understand that your activities are looked at by college admissions officers um, as proof, as evidence, as continuity. So some of you say, I want to be a doctor, and all your activities have nothing to do with being a doctor. Some of you say, I want to be a lawyer, and nothing there is about law. Now, I'm not saying that you are going to cure cancer if you want to be a doctor. I'm not saying that you can't do things just for fun. What I'm saying is, if you're going to be in an activity, make it work for you. And we'll talk a little bit about that. You can't just follow the president of an organization or ASB because they're the leader. You have certain goals you need to meet. If you're talking about rescuing animals and you're part of a club that has nothing to do with rescuing animals, can you possibly bring up a committee who may want to do something in the name of the club to do activities which will help rescue animals? You see what I'm saying? How you use that to your opportunity? Also, a lot of activities show breadth, meaning they're kind of shallow or the surface level. You like doing one, two, three, four, five things. This is why in middle school I say go ahead and try different things. But by the time you get in high school, you want to demonstrate depth in something. This is why each and every one of you are here researching and publishing and creating your organizations and then hopefully aligning it with internship opportunities or developing resumes that show that depth, that kind of expertise in this area that you want, okay? But your challenge is to demonstrate how your involvement is committed to your own personal growth, your academic goals, and align your activities in a way that speak volumes about who you are. Because when you're in college, you have typically four classes unless you're a semester system. Three classes in your quarter system, right? Most of these classes range between two hours, two days a week. So you're in class literally eight to 12 hours. The university wants to know what are you going to be doing with all this free time? And I know all of you want to say, I'm going to be studying. I'm going to be in the library studying. They don't want someone who's always going to be in the library studying. They want someone who's going to contribute to that campus community. They want someone who's going to be able to do something um, that they can boast and brag about. It's like, oh, that Stanford kid, he's our, or, you know, or that kid doing stuff in Palo Alto, he comes to Stanford. Or that kid doing something in um, the local animal shelter, he's our, you know, she's ours, stuff like that, right? They wanna make sure you're part of the community, part of the vibrancy of that area because universities aren't just like isolated little structures. They're part of many other structures in the community, part of the business, part of the social, part of the cultural, part of the political apparatus of that area. And your activities that you do now demonstrate and provide evidence that this is what you will be doing at that university. So you have to start thinking about these things, okay? So how do you communicate to colleges that you're part of a club? Well, I've helped countless seniors, and they say, oh, I'm part of this club. And then under the description box, I say, well, what did you do? They're like, oh, the club wasn't very active. Well, big deal. If the club wasn't active, you weren't very active. And if the club wasn't ever very active, you could have done something to make it active. You don't have to find the most active club. You can find the, most, the least popular club and make it active. Notice, I didn't say popular, just make it active. Because it's about your engagement level, not your membership level. 
okay? It's kind of like Mr. G has a membership to the gym, but if he doesn't go use it, he's not very engaged in using that gym, right? Um, so imagine going to Disneyland or to a game or to church or temple and not really participating, just sitting there. How fun would it be? How much would you learn? How much would you grow? Or better, imagine being on a team and not participating and helping that team out to win. You're kind of like dead weight. I don't want you to be dead weight. I want you to really think about what you're doing and how you can ultimately add value. Now, a lot of you here, what colleges want are well-rounded students. And I say time and time again, this is the biggest myth that exists. Colleges do not want someone who has a little bit of ASB, a little bit of sports, a little bit of, I found a club and did nothing with it, or um, I had a job. You can't have a little bit of everything anymore. They want this and then some. The then some is your demonstrated interest. Your research takes you there on a scholarly level, on an academic, quasi-academic level. But you have to follow up your research with something concrete, some sort of activity. And this, for most of you, means you'll be a junior when this happens. So you have to think about, well, what am I going to do now that I've identified in my research that's a big challenge, whether it's in the robotics community, whether it's in the business community, whether it's in the Alzheimer's or sports or cultural type of elements or um, um, in the area of dermatology. I'm looking at the various faces in the audience of whichever you guys are interested in. But there is a myth. It's not about a well-rounded student. You have to have that demonstrated interest, okay? Now, the UCs, UCLA, UC Berkeley, Irvine, San Diego, they look at, and this is literally what's on the college, so I want you to look at this so you're not surprised when you're a senior. Honors and awards, okay? Those are academic honors and other type of honors. You got a, or you earned an award in um, league championship or CIF, that's an other, unless it's a scholar athlete, that's an academic. And this goes on your college application. National Merit Semifinalist, History Day LA, um, things of an academic nature are typically preferred by universities because you're there for academics. So as many academic achievements and awards as possible, are what's desirable here. Now, it's hard to get these if you're not aware of this sort of game early on. And this is why I'm telling you this now so you can be aware of, you wanna go after some academic achievements. Extracurriculars, which is kind of our focus today. They wanna know how many hours a week, your engagement level, what you, what you did to make an impact in the community, quantify it as much as possible, and we're going to do an exercise with this later on. Also, continuity. So you need to be involved in something, hopefully over four years. Some of you have done like level 12 piano for 12 years. That's great, but then when you think about it, especially if you're an Asian female who's been encouraged to play piano for 12 years, and yes, you got to level 12, and yes, that's a great achievement, look at your competition. How many of them have done the same thing? Maybe you take that skill set and you apply it somehow differently for a cause that you're interested in pursuing now relative to your research. Volunteer and community service. It, it, I hear this a lot of time. Uh, well, I want to be um, an astrophysicist and I volunteer at the library. Well, what are you doing at the library? Are you just welcoming people? Are you focusing on the science section and doing something at the library with the science section? Are you teaching the younger kids in the library um, something about science? Again, just to go casually and volunteer is not enough. You have to have a strategy when you're going in there. And I know it's hard at your age to say, well, I want to volunteer, but I'm only going to do X, Y, and Z. Now, do whatever they want you to do. But say, hey, by the time you know, I give you like three, four, five weeks here, could I do some project at the end involving science? Propose something for them. Be proactive because oftentimes the librarian and other people will be like, hey, that's a good idea. Let's give it a shot, you know? Make it work for you. Special programs. These are like AVID, Boy State, things that um, even, um, what is it, Eagle Scout projects and Boy Scout projects. A lot of people have these. 
And what I always see in the, the, the equivalent of the Boy Scout is the, the Golden Award, right? right? For the girls? No? Yeah, it's something the, like that. The Golden Award or something like that? Um, and they spend 12 years working and, and learning about leadership and commitment and dedication in the community. And at the end of those 12 years, they go paint a curve. What the heck does that have to do with anything? It's good for Boy Scouts, I guess. It's good for your Eagle Scout achievement. But to just say, I painted a curve, or I planted a flower bed, or I, I went to a church and put a board up to block out a window because there was too much light going on, all of which are things that I've read on applications, doesn't do much for yourself. Think about, well, who really needs help? I've learned leadership skills. I'm going to have an army of young men and women at my disposal because I have to tell them and direct them and guide them. What is it that we can do that I want them, that I want to achieve, that hopefully aligns with some of my interests when I'm applying to college? Otherwise, it's just a painted curve. You following me? Okay. Um, work experience. Don't underestimate work experience. A lot of people your age, how many of you here have a job, a part-time job? One out of how many of you? That's different. But don't just dismiss it as I have a J-O-B. What skills are you learning? What responsibilities do you have? How have you grown? Why do you have a job? You need to keep these things in mind because when it comes to college application and on your resume right now, you have to be able to sell yourself. And I'm going to give you some examples of a job in a second, okay? Now, the Common App, which this is the activities part of the Common App, is a little bit different. Oh, I forgot to mention, by the way, in the UC, you have to do all this in under 160 characters. Okay? On the Common App, you have different types of activities, such as cultural, dance, environmental. Your title and your position, which you get 50 words to describe, and it's called the top box. And then your participation, hours per week, and um, hours per week and hours per year. Description is 150 characters. Now, whether it's a resume or whether you're writing an activity on your college app, and I know this seems kind of like early for you guys, but I want you to be aware of it because there's strategies when we're writing, ultimately with my seniors, um, their activities that we follow. So many times on the top box or the title, they say school newspaper, right? And then they say, I am the editor for the school newspaper and, well, if you only have 150 characters or 160 characters, you don't want to repeat yourself. You want to be able to say stuff like, editor of the sports column. I was responsible for brainstorming, revising, and supervising articles produced by staff members. Now, I'm going to get each and every one of you, there's about a four or five page, and some of you already have given it to you, but I'm going to give you another copy of power verbs that I've put together, and they're in categories. So you can say, instead of led, you know, you can say spearheaded. Um, instead of um, participated, you can say actively engaged. The way you word things really matters because it's the fine details at the end of the day, whether it's your resume that allows you to land an opportunity at an internship, or whether it's the college application, or whether you're going up for a job. You have to be able to market and sell yourself, okay? Emphasize anything that's tangible, anything that's measurable. Who did you impact? Often people say, I raised money for children in Kenya, for example, or in some other country. Well, be more specific. Raise $3,000 to provide three uniforms and scholarships for students attending the Kenyans Girls School, and they even put, in this case, their website, okay? Not to say that every college admissions officer has time to go click on it, but you never know when they do have time to click on it. This can go for your resume as well. You want to be able to articulate and express what it is that you've done and how you've impacted. Measurable is very important. Use active verbs. That's the handout I'm going to give you in a second, right? You can't say just, or I don't recommend you say, work at a clinic doing odd jobs. You could say, organize patient diagnosis, um, diagnosis notes, sterilize tools for surgery, and assist it with x-ray analysis. Proactive, again. You can say, I washed the pup puppy, or you can say, I engaged in the hygienic maintenance of, um, I don't know, feline, no, that's a cat, huh? <laughs> K9. 
okay? So use the present tense as much as possible. And I know this sounds like a senior thing, but I'm getting to your activity in this section. Um, include any responsibilities. You don't wanna say coordinated practices. You wanna say responsible for leading practices, planning fundraising, and recruiting new participants or athletes if you're part of the team, okay? You don't wanna say tutor students, of which many of you tutor students, right? You wanna say provided support to fourth graders with essay writing, difficult math concepts, and served as a mentor. You see how one is a lot more specific, measurable, and over time, hopefully we can quantify how many kids you had an impact upon, rather. So here we go, we're gonna start our interactive exercise. All right. So everyone's gonna take out a piece of paper, right? You, the paper, the package you each have. You can take a look at it. We're gonna do this together. I want you guys to ask questions if you're struggling, okay? First, list five words that you would use to describe yourself. What do they mean? Wait, like, is it one of these? List five words that you would oh. That you would use to describe yourself. Now, here's the thing. I do not want you to use the words committed, dedicated, and passionate. Because that is taken by everyone. Okay? So, as you guys can tell, trying to figure things out which describe you is extremely challenging. Now, many of you haven't been asked to stop and think and be reflective upon who you are and why you do things and how you do things. Typically, you go to school, they teach you to strive for a grade. Very few are teaching you how to reflect upon how you got that grade. Think about this. How many times have your parents asked, what did you get on that test, right? Versus asking, what did you learn today? Think about how many of you sit around a table with your family members during dinner and talk about current events and do your parents ask for your opinion? Oh, yes. That's good. Yeah. Because you have to back up your claim. Yeah. So, because the goal, why are you confused? The goal when you apply to college is to figure out who you are. What are you about? What do you have to offer? How are you any different than average Sally, Joe, Tom, etc.? So I'm going to give you a challenge because this is telling I want you to show. I want you, not today, but go home and from your five words, no matter what you put on there, I heard alert, I heard um, someone who has conviction, I heard risk taker, I want you to give me clear examples of these things because that's your story that's your narrative that's what you're going to be talking about when you apply to college and more importantly you should know that now now I want you to go to the next section I want you to think of three people that you admire you hold in high regards and think of what qualities and traits they possess so list the people one two three dead or alive animated or real, it can be Snoopy, it doesn't matter to me. But then I want you to tell me what qualities and traits they possess. You may begin. All right, so, this is important because it speaks towards the direction you wanna to go to. What you've learned, what you hope to learn. We got this, right? Now, I want you to turn the page and write down what career are you considering? Uh, it can be several, it doesn't matter. What career are you considering? I want you to think about it. Then I want you to answer this question. What experience or experiences have I had in this area? Then I want you, if none, what experiences would you like to obtain in this upcoming year? This should provide a little bit of direction. So when you ask, oh, Mr. G, should I do this? Oh, should I do that? <clears throat> running to your counselors, running to your favorite teachers, because ultimately this is what you're asking. 
um, should I do this? But I'm going to do it no matter what you say. I just need some validation for it so I can go forward and tell my parents that you said it was OK. If you don't have any experience in the area you're interested in, this is the time to go after that opportunity. Again, if you're part of a club, if I'm part of the robotics club, and yet I want to be a physical therapist, I should figure out the intersection between physical therapy and robotics. That's my place. That's where I belong for that moment in time. Okay? How are you going to stand right in front of the camera? <laughs> you know, we're not going to edit that out. Everyone that was Dylan Wong? Um, 10th grade, goes to Cerritos High School. Everybody beat him up. His address did. All right. Now, this is very important. Some of you have started resumes with me. You were in 8th or ninth grade. When was the last time you updated that resume? Your resume should be li a living, breathing document. You have obtained certain achievements and accolades this past year. Put it down. You're going to have to do it sooner or later. It's actually nice to see the things you've, you've achieved. Google Docs, just pull it back up and do it. In eighth grade, usually they do it, they crumble it, and they throw it away. I had one parent in seventh grade said, well, this is nice, you, you don't need this, and threw it in the trash can. Sometimes our parents don't understand things either. You need to keep a running list of your achievements. Now, on the extreme polar end, I've had, had, I've had parents walk into my office with binders of every single little award and certificate that that child has earned since like kindergarten, okay? You cannot put like middle school and kindergarten achievements when applying to college. Well, you can, but hopefully you have more in high school that outweigh any of those, okay? Not more, but at least the, they show or demonstrate your growth, okay? Parents are really neat when it comes to applying to college because they want to say, oh, remember in second grade you did this. Oh, no, in third grade you did this. Well, we're not talking about second and third grade you when we're applying to college. We're talking about young adult you, okay? What does young adult you look like? So I want you to now turn the page and write down Describe how you have exhibited maturity and responsibility. I do not want any of you to write down, I went to school, I took three APs, and I earned straight A's. I got it. The academics, we get it. Your report card will reflect that. How else have you demonstrated maturity and responsibility? Take a minute to fill that out. Then, I want you to talk about your proudest academic accomplishment. Again, I don't want to hear, I got an A in Calc BC. I want to know all the effort you put in there to learn and achieve. Something academic. Yes. No? Question? Then I want you to talk about your overall proudest personal accomplishment. Finally, I'm going to let you talk about a course that has been the most challenging for you, and then I want you to tell me why. Take a minute to answer these four questions. Of what? All right, so we did this, right? Now, I want you to think of everything that you have done. All activities, all sports, everything. And I want you to cluster them. So if it's MUN, if it's ASB, and volleyball, 
do we have three different clusters? Do we have all one cluster? I want you to draw relationships between what you do. So let me give you an example. Brent came to me the other day and he said, the only class that's available for me to take at, at my school is journalism, but I really don't know anything or really am fascinated with journalism, but he may possibly have to have taken journalism. So I asked him, to, because I know Brent is very interested in like technology, especially audio related stuff and his researches with um, um, the physics of sound, et cetera, things of that nature. I asked him to go ask the teacher if he can focus on um, journalism, but on technology and innovation and maybe doing writing reviews on technology for the newspaper, stuff like that. So sometimes we have to make opportunities out of things that, and this is kind of like the recurring theme here, out of things that are scattered. So I want you to bring things together and create these clusters of things. Even if there's overlap, it's okay. I want you to see, I want you to see and show me commonalities between things that you have participated in. Yes? Can we write uh, G? Now you can write Nigel Avoid, yes, and G. Okay? All right. We're about to wrap it up. One last thing. <laughs> One last thing. Now that you listed your activities in the past, I want you to list what clubs, organization, or activities you wish to participate in this year. I want you to think why. I don't, you don't need to list it. Just think why and create a cluster around it. What are you doing this year? What's the general theme? And GE can be part of that. Yes. Okay? That's for this upcoming year because Many of you are going to start enrolling in clubs. Has Oxford had open enrollment on clubs yet? Like no. recruitment day and stuff like that? No. no? But it's coming. Yeah. So you have to start thinking, well, what do I want to do with what club? And things of that nature. Okay? Ultimately, I want to leave you with this thought. Who are you? Oh, you always say that, Mr. G. I don't know. Well, you need to figure this out. Who are you? Because if you don't know yourself, you won't be able to sell yourself when it comes to pursuing opportunities. Now, no one knows oneself 100%. I don't know myself 100%. I will try to smile while the phone rings. All right, thank you very much. Help each other out, finish the rest of the packet, and good night. Oh my